All right, class, everybody sit down, get your notebooks out, your pencils out, and turn to chapter safety, because that's what we're talking about today, epoxy safety. This is an important one, everybody, so open up those ears for me. <laughs> I'm getting the whiteboard. All right. How do they, whoa, 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 whoa. No reading ahead today. That you didn't know I had two, did you? All right, now that you can't read ahead, let me tell you where we're going. We're gonna talk about three things first. First is, actually, we're talking about you. You need to be aware of some things about yourself to move forward. Second, we're gonna talk about personal protective equipment, or PPE. You've heard that phrase before, probably. I hope so, at least. And then the third thing is space. The space you're doing these projects in. Large, small, windows, no windows. We gotta talk about that. All right, so let's start with you, my lovely, lovely friend here. You know what I haven't done is like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Well, you all get it. Help me out. Like and subscribe. All right, let's talk about you. There's three things we need to talk about when it comes to you. Number one is sensitivity. Number two is aptitude. And then number three is risk tolerance, right? How risky can you be? So sensitivity. What do I mean by sensitivity? Well, epoxy is a chemical, and it has certain things in it that you can react to if you're sensitive to them. For instance, I found out very recently that a friend of mine, when he eats cilantro, whether it be on a delicious double chicken chipotle burrito bowl like yours truly orders, or just in something else, it tastes like soap to him. And that was hard for me to believe. I love cilantro. I don't like soap. How is he making this connection? Turns out he has a sensitivity to it. He has a predisposition. The same thing is true with epoxies. Some people have a sensitivity to epoxy naturally that gives them a rash or causes them to have some other reaction. It's not any fault of theirs. That's just something that they have a sensitivity to. This is something you're gonna have to learn along the way or talk to your doctor, of course, if you have other concerns about other conditions that may affect things. Now, you might be born with this sensitivity or you can actually develop it. If you don't use the proper PPE like we've talked about and you keep dousing your skin in epoxy all the time, you can actually develop a sensitivity. So we wanna be mindful of this. Number two is aptitude. It's basically how much research you've done, how much you understand how to mix and measure, right? Look at this. This is a half full glass and maybe a quarter full glass of side A and side B equal parts one to one. That's not quite equal parts. We're gonna have an off mixture here, which means that this isn't operating and reacting the way that it should. You need to be safe, you need to do things appropriately. That's what I mean by aptitude. Read those directions, read those safety data sheets and make sure you understand all the hazards. All right, last one when it comes to you is risk tolerance here. No matter how much I say in the rest of this video's content, there's gonna be somebody that says, well, okay, buddy, really overblowing things there, aren't you? If you're not that person, you might be somebody who's very, very nervous and doesn't want to develop any sensitivity whatsoever. But just understand, everybody's different. Everybody has a different level of risk tolerance. So you're going to see some people doing something you would never do, and other people might feel like somebody's being overprotective or overcautious. Let's be gracious to one another, and let's just educate each other. Here we go. Section two. I hope you're taking copious notes. All right, PPE, let's talk about it. Personal protective equipment. There are four things I really need you to just lock it in here, drill it into your brain. Safety glasses, gloves, clothes, covering clothes, long sleeve shoes, boots, we'll get to that. Respirators, so what are they? Let's start with the safety glasses here. It might seem obvious, but you gotta protect your eyes. When this stuff is in liquid form, you can mix it up, you can pull your stick really, really quickly towards you, cause a depression, the epoxy folds in on itself and shoots up like a geyser. That could get in your eyes. Then you have liquid epoxy in your eyes that you need to rinse out really quickly. If you don't rinse it out, well, we know how this stuff reacts, right? It's exothermic and it hardens. I don't think you want anything to do with that when it comes to your eyes. All right, safety glasses, check. Let's talk about gloves. Now, when you're mixing epoxy, your hands are gonna be right next to this material. So you wanna make sure they're covered up, that even some epoxy is gonna spill onto it. It's not gonna get onto your skin. So make sure you wear gloves. Disposable gloves are great. I use nitrile gloves, they work perfectly. The main thing is only use them once. Don't use reusable gloves where the epoxy continues to seep into them or get onto them and then out of nowhere, you don't know what's cured or not cured and then you've got epoxy on your skin. We don't want that. For those of you that don't know how to take off gloves without touching the actual skin with the material, how about a two second demo? Here's the worst part of every video, at least according to uh, Matt and Taylor. 
All right, so let's say your gloves are on, but they're covered in epoxy. Here's a trick. I grab some paper towel and then do the pinch maneuver. That paper towel will actually cut through the epoxy and give you some grip. So paper towel onto the glove, gonna remove it like that. I've got a clean hand here. I'm gonna ball up that glove underneath. Dunzo. Now let's talk about covering clothes. What in the world are covering clothes? Well, it was my way of saying, you need to cover as much of your body as you can with long sleeves, pants, closed toed shoes, whatever it takes to make sure that your skin's not exposed for epoxy to get onto it. This one in particular, you're gonna see a lot of people doing this one of two ways. Some people have short sleeves on, some people have long sleeves on. Remember, risk tolerance is a thing. Other people choose to do things differently. The fourth one is a respirator. You've probably heard about this, but we wear a respirator to make sure we're not inhaling organic vapors and also that we're not inhaling particles as well. Organic vapors and particles, that's what a respirator helps us avoid. You've been doing really good. I'm proud of you. You've been staying with, by force, of course. I've not given you the opportunity to deviate, but we'll get rid of this guy now. I think being a teacher would have been a good time. My entire family's teachers, like all of them. All right. The third thing is space. Let's talk about it. So there's mainly two different types of space we need to talk about, large spaces and small spaces. I've drawn this here so you can kind of see what we mean. In a large space, if we put one drop of food coloring, that food coloring is gonna dissipate. So it's really not that impactful. Versus a smaller space, that same one drop is gonna have a bigger impact. The same is true when it comes to working with epoxy. If you're in a well-ventilated with a lot of airflow, huge square footage space like where we are every day, well, that's great. These effects aren't that big, but if you're in a very small one bedroom room in your apartment, no windows, the closets, doors closed, everything shut down, you're completely by yourself alone. Well, there's, there's not enough space for all this to dissipate, is there? Now, as you can see, we're in a well ventilated space, but if I were working from my house or apartment, I would definitely be wearing a respirator. Now you might've heard the term VOCs, volatile organic compounds, right? The nice part with epoxy is we don't have to worry about VOCs too much. At least in our products, it's low to no VOC. That's great, but these are still chemicals. These still have things that can react with our bodies. So you still have to be careful. Don't let no VOCs mean no safety for me. Go be smart, be safe. All right, so we know larger spaces, that's better. Smaller spaces, not so good. But there's still two things we gotta talk about with space. Ventilation and airflow. Think about ventilation, I'm using the term here, to mean how many windows can you open? How many garage doors? How big is your garage door? How much can you remove the container part of this equation? The second is airflow. So if you have the windows open, that's great. Your kitchen is now subsequently a bigger space, so to speak, but is the airflow happening? Are you switching out the air or are all those particles and vapors and stuff still existing in there? So it's not just ventilation, how many windows you have open, it's also airflow. How much air are you exchanging? Both of those things matter as well. If it's just you and your apartment, that's great. But if you're sharing the same space with a bunch of people and you have a respirator and glasses and they don't, well, think about that. You gotta take care of the people around you and be mindful of the space that you're in. All right. Enough of my hand sketching, we get it. You, PPE, space, you've got the principles. Well, now let me spin this whiteboard and let's turn it into some useful knowledge. Now we can't talk about epoxy safety without talking about the things that we do with epoxy. Pouring, mixing, demolding, sanding and cutting, and polishing. So let's talk about small space and large space, what you should use within those spaces, depending on what you're doing. Let's start with pouring. All right, so pouring our epoxies in a liquid form. That means it can gloop and glorp and glop everywhere, right? We gotta be mindful of that. So in small spaces, glasses, gloves, covering clothes, and a respirator. You're full bore on this one. This is full safety situation. In that larger space, just like we talked about, we can kind of afford to lose the respirator if we feel comfortable doing that. That's the main difference here. Now, in a mixing situation, our epoxy is also still liquid. In fact, this is where we have a pretty big chance of sloshing it onto our skin, our face, or somebody else. So, same rules apply. In that small space, glasses, gloves, covering clothes, and a respirator. In a larger space, same thing as before. Glasses, gloves, and covering clothes. You wanna be smart. Now, another thing you probably don't think about is actually demolding. That's when your material is in a solid state. But here's the important piece of this. 
make sure it's fully cured. If you don't wait until this is fully cured, then there's still chemical reactions happening within the material, and then we need to go back to the safety situation we had when it was liquid. If you let it fully cure and then demold, you're gonna be okay. Again, make sure your aptitude is up. Make sure you know how to mix, you know how to measure, and you know what you're doing. Now, after you've demolded it, you might be sanding and cutting up your epoxy project. That's great. I've spent too many hours doing that exact same thing. Here's the deal. In that situation, there are little particles. That's what we call atomizing the resin. That's something that you can inhale. No bueno, we do not want to inhale epoxy. So here's the thing. I don't care if you're in a small space or a large space. Get them glasses on and get that respirator on, folks. I spoke to a maker recently who refused to wear a respirator while sanding all of his big river tables, and he had some complications from it. Trust me, he is an evangelist now for wearing a respirator. Our last activity is polishing. Some of you will never do this. Some of you do this all the time. My main note for you here is look at the MSDS or the SDS for that particular polish that you're using. I always default to super safety when it comes to this stuff because it usually has chemicals within it. So that's glasses, gloves, covering clothes, and a respirator, regardless of your space. All right, class, you're dismissed to go use epoxy safely. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you have more safety questions, please put them in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them. There's a lot when it comes to this stuff, and we want to make sure we're equipping you to be safe and successful. Till next time.